So at this stage of the tutorial, I would again like to draw your attention to the model tree that you see on the left of your screen. And if we were to expand this model tree right now, you will notice that it has indeed grown in size since the last time that we checked in. And you will also see that it still loyally adheres to the same structure that we have programmed here in the AnyScript file. So this is just a reminder that the model tree reflects exactly uh, the, same, uh, the, the same structure that you uh, type in here to your AnyScript window. So now we have a ground reference frame to which we can anchor our mechanism. Uh, so the next step would then be to just start building the actual mechanism itself. Now, based on our discussion so far, if I were to ask you how we would go about this, then the most obvious answer would be to just search this class list on the left for the appropriate class uh, for creating a new segment and then including the template for that class right here in the main file. But at this stage, we'll do something a little differently because I would really like to introduce you to this concept that is known as an include statement. Now, include statements come in handy when you want to distribute your code over multiple AnyScript any files. Now, you can see that uh, we haven't really created a very complex model yet, but the, you, can also, you can see that the code is starting to grow and there will be a stage where it starts getting a little harsh on the eyes. So it probably isn't a very good idea to squish in all your code into this uh, single main file, but rather distribute it. And you use include statements to sort of link all those files to your main file. So we will create the segment in a new AnyScript file, which I will open by clicking the button on the toolbar at the top. And this opens a new scripting window. And I will save this file right away as segment.any. Now in segment.any, we again have these tabs that you see on the left of the scripting window when you have one of the tabs over there which says classes. And over here, I can open the class list. And the class which lets us create a new segment is called any seg. So I'm just going to find that here. There it is. And I'm going to include the template for that class in this file. So the first thing that it prompts us for is an object name and I will go ahead and name this segment one. And we then have a few optional parameters, which you can see they have been commented out with the double uh, forward slash. So let us just delete all these optional parameters first and I'll delete all of them except one called R0, which I will be setting in a, just a few minutes. And apart from these optional parameters, there were also two mandatory parameters that the user had to specify. And these are the mass of the segment and this quantity JII, which is a three-dimensional vector, as you see over here. And JII is basically just a vector containing the three diagonal elements of the inertia matrix for that segment. And since that inertia matrix is a three by three matrix, that is the reason why you have uh, three, ele three vector elements that you would have to fill in. So let's just set the mass of the segment to be 10 kilograms. And as for JII, I will set the three diagonal elements to be one, five and five kilogram meter square respectively. Now, turning our attention to R0, R0 is an optional parameter, of course, and it just, uh, it sets the three dimensional coordinates of the point at which the segment will be loaded when your model is freshly loaded. So this is, I'm just gonna arbitrarily set this to say 0.2 meters and 0.2 in the, so 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and zero, those are the X, Y, Z coordinates of the point at which the segment will be loaded. So great, this is our segment, but if you remember our discussion from earlier, uh, we cannot really uh, expect the segment to be displayed right away because any script requires you to sort of explicitly mention that you want a certain object to be uh, displayed. So we will do that by scrolling up to the any draw series of classes over here. And over here, there will be a class that is called any draw seg. And this is the class that lets you visualize a segment in the model view. So let us include the template for this class over here. And I'm just going to fill in the object name as draw segment one, which I think will sufficiently describe the function of this class. And then you see a lot of optional parameters in the green text that has been uh, commented out, of course. And I'm just going to delete that. Uh, in reality, I could I could just have left this text over there because these comments will be ignored by the code, but I 
I think the code gets a lot more readable when you do away with the, the unnecessary uh, optional parameters that where you're happy with the default values. I'm just going to set the value of this inertia scale to point 0.1. I won't go into what this means right now, but I will encourage you to look this up in the reference manual. So great. Now we have created a segment and a visualization object for that segment, but there is still one issue, which is that the main script over here has no idea that this segment file exists and it, because this has been created completely independently. So we can now go ahead and close segment.any and we need to now figure out a way to link segment.any to the main file. And this is what we achieve. This is what we achieve using the include statement. So the format for the include statement is hash include space open inverted commas and segment.any close inver inverted commas. It's important to note that the include statement is one of those rare statements in anybody which uh, does not end with a semicolon. Now, and, and the reason why we haven't included a file path uh, ahead of segment of the of the name segment.any, the file name, is because uh, both segment.any and our main file demo underscore main.any are both located in the same file location, so they can't find each other. Now, this include statement actually works like a hyperlink, and literally like a hyperlink, because I can actually double click on the text segment.any, and that will automatically open up the file itself. So if you have a lot of include statements in your uh, in your model, it's a, the navigation of the code becomes a lot easier because you just need to open the main file and then use these hyperlink-like uh, include statements to then uh, reach out to the other files that are uh, that are called upon by the main file. So I think now we are ready to load the model uh, because now I think the segment will be read and I click the load model button on the top and the message window on the bottom says that the model has been loaded successfully. So now I can go back to the uh, window drop down menu at the top and click on model view, which now gives me this. So you can see that in addition to the red ground reference frame, you also see this huge yellow ellipsoid, which is the the default drawing object for a segment in anybody because we didn't really specify a shape for the segment. We just specified a set of inertial parameters. And there are ways in which you could actually have more realistic views of segments, but I will not go into that at this stage of the tutorial. I will go ahead and close this window now and just introduce you to two more very interesting and powerful concepts in any script. So this, these will really let you navigate uh, the code very easily. So our code is getting a little larger right now, as you can see. Uh, so I'm going to teach you this trick where I would like to get to draw your attention to the left of your screen over here where we have the model tree. And I'm going to focus specifically on this object in the model tree, which is segment one. And you would recognize that this is the, is the segment that we've just created. Now, let's say I wanted to find out where exactly this object was defined in any script. What I can do is simply right click on segment one and say locate in any script. And this would automatically take me to the file segment.any over here. And this is, of course, where we created the segment. And the cursor has also gone to the point where the segment was or the segment object was defined right here. We can also go the other way around, which is let's say I want to know where draw segment one is located in the model tree. What I can do is take my cursor over draw segment one and right click and say locate in model tree. And if you now see look here, you can see that the draw segment one object has been highlighted. So I would really recommend that you use these two tools to uh, browse your model because it just makes life a lot easier in when you have those really huge complex models. So we now have a global reference frame and we also have a rigid body segment. So next, uh, let us try making a joint. <laughs> 